Let's get to that topic. Okay. So marketing AI. Yeah. If you uh, <coughs> next, maybe about four or five slides all come from this marketing guide. It's free. Uh, I'll get get you a copy of these uh, slides. Um, take a look at it. And they have some very it's non technical. It's very interesting stories about uh, what you can do in marketing uh, with uh, machine learning. So one example is drip emails. Okay. So you what you do is you create a list of customer action. So let me take web because it's slightly easier. Uh, you have a website visitor. They come to the website and look at the home page, go away and never come There's a website visitor who comes to your web page, clicks around a few links, goes to various pages, go away and never come back. Uh, there is a website visitor who comes, looks around, directly goes to something like resources, then directly downloads like two, three PDFs, and they even are willing to give you an email, and then they come back a little bit. <coughs> There is a website visitor who is like, like looking around, not doing much, and suddenly one chatbot pops up on the side. Hey, hey, can I help you? And this fellow said, she closes the chatbot and gets something. Like there is somebody else who comes into the chatbot and they start chatting, saying, "Hey guys, you know, I was looking for this product, but it looks like it is not listed." In oh, that product, we change its name, blah blah blah. So different levels of engagement, and when visitors come. What is the right thing you do to take them to a different level? Okay, you don't control how which visitor comes. You don't control what their behavior is going to be. But if you have a little bit more intelligence about where they came from, what they are, maybe there are a few things you can do to show them even the front page, which is very different. This is called extreme customization. And that is one of the aims of Repeating visitors is a little less difficult, and then several times repeating visitors is even less difficult. But we show the same set of pages to the same set of people, and I go to this product ten times to use it, and I still have to navigate through all these pages. I said, hey, if I was looking at a bunch of books, when I go back to Amazon, why don't you directly take me to the last place where I went, or make it an option? So that I said, I, you know, there is a question. Um, uh, so, can you can you make them better? make it easier for people to interact. So what you do is create a list of customer actions and responses. You say, OK, this is what I expect the customers to come to my site. These are the actions we expect them to take. And these are the responses we are going to give to them. And these are the value. This doesn't require any technology. You can just look at it and say, wow, this makes sense. Then they say, if customer takes actions, <laughs> respond with why. So predictable behavior, no machine learning so far. Okay. Now what you do is you take all these instances and create a log file. Say customer X, action Y, you know, response Z. Customer X, action Y, response. You just create this whole log. And then you start looking at this log. And then look at all the customers who have gone and hit your goals. Your goal might have been to get an email address from them, for them to download a white paper, for them to ask a question. Maybe go to a support, you know, contact us page and ask something, or go to a frequently asked question page and click on actual question. Each one of them show an increasing level of interest. And how can you do that without manually sitting and looking through all the logs? To some extent, Google Analytics helps because it gives you flows where people dropped off and all kinds of things. But there's a layer above Google Analytics that you can do, and when you have a large amount of data, especially a lot of people coming to the visit, like nothing much is happening. You can take it and then you know there is one. And then what you do is you can drip emails based on the actions they have taken and say, oh, we noticed that you came to this site for blah and uh, you know this is what we are trying to do, and can we help us with this? We think this may be very useful for you, and a whole bunch of things you know you can do. That is one application for which these are all the applications for which uh, machine learning is currently being used. Um, sending frequency optimization. I don't want to receive. The moment I sign up for a uh, service, I start getting email. As if I'm like in some urgent need to purchase something every other day, every third day, every week. Every... I don't want that. I mean, some of us, even though I said my purchase time frame is three to six months, I always say more than six months, so that all the sales guys will lose interest in me and nobody will call me. Uh, but 
Uh, you still keep getting getting these emails. So what is the reasonable frequency of sending emails? And can you map it to the customer's actions or the visitor's actions on your website to see how frequently, how urgent is the need? Can you do an inference on the urgency of needs? And that is a very interesting machine learning problem. Machine learning allows marketers to carve lists into precise segments and to nearly personalize sending frequencies for individual experience. I talked earlier about a conversion uh, predictor, saying that, oh, if they came and did trial and they did these following actions, then they're likely to convert to a paid customer. I don't care about the top 30% who definitely will subscribe and pay me. I don't care about the bottom 30% which will always come and go away and do nothing and never pay and never do anything. What about the middle 40 percent? Can I push some of them to the top person? How can, how can I do that kind of stuff? So what is the, as soon as they sign up for trial, give two days, wait, and see where something useful happened. If not, can you go and, you know, talk to customers and find out, hey, you know, you noticed that you signed up two days ago, we saw you did this, you need help the next one. You know, this is a way to find out. Uh, this actually feeds the product engineer. Okay? So this is one of these things already being done uh, in marketing. Content marketing. So there is this class of marketing called content marketing or inbound marketing, and there is some overlap in two terms. But essentially, what you are doing is you are pulling people into your website to content. The content can be anything. It could be a video on YouTube. It could be a podcast you made. It could be a, a you know like a blog post that you wrote. It could be a tweet, or a Facebook post, or a LinkedIn share article, any of those things. All these different types of content is going to pull people in, to come into your website. Okay? Um, what content do I put on? What kind of users do I have? You know, like, can I? So if you assume that you did a visitor segmentation, and then from the segmentation you can figure out saying, these types of users like this type of content, this style of content, this, this type of mixed you know, content like with some video in there, some images and graphics and all that. These kind of people will get infographics, all that kind of stuff. So, well, you have, machine learning can discover the most valuable or least expensive keywords in copy, so that you can use the keywords for your AdWords, Google AdWords or Facebook ads or whatever. And then, extract intents based on the keywords, right? Um, so, customer comes and types a query. So can you like, find their intent? Can you also find their intent through the actions that they take? Also, the intent with the, you know, like, so basically what you do is, this keyword stuff is blog posts, most of the time. But sometimes stories are very interesting. And then, but the stories have to be really small, because they're not coming here to read an hour. <coughs> so you want to tell a very interesting story of what some customer did at X point in time, kind of thing, and that is essentially what, what you do. Right? So this is already being done. Uh, content marketing at different levels. There's a company called Curata, C U R A T A. They're basically a curation engine, and they are um, they provide a lot of uh, content, and uh, you know, they use AI for content. Uh, you will hear this term predictive analytics a lot. The conversion predictor we talked about is is basically predicting that the people will do X. And that is one of the things that, that happens. Um, and this is being increasingly used. And then predictions can be improved over a period of time. Right now, we have no predictions. We so say, right, let's see what happens. And people come in and sign up, and when they convert, they convert. If they don't convert, but we'll just throw a lot of calls at many of the people, and a lot of them may be completing this. In fact, in one of the conferences um, of a company and machine learning, they said sales process, they have 17 steps the track of a, of a journey of a visitor to a paying customer. No. And I said, for me, sales was like, you want to buy this? Okay. But it's like, so much uh, analytics goes into this. Um, so you can layer your analytics on top of Google Analytics. Most of what are, you get to Google Analytics, if you have a couple of programmers, they can actually extract all the data and give it to you. Google Analytics itself gets it from your log files anyway. And then you can, but they do a lot of uh, intelligence added to that. Um, predicts intents and interactions. What are the interactions that people are having? And then they tell the follow actions, you know. Uh, you know, customer downloads a white paper, it sends some signal. We're just doing research, like we do most of the time. Download all the white papers, 
probably we can go through the time. Um, customer mentioned this problem. So HubSpot is this company that used to do something very interesting. Then we did generation mechanism. This is nothing to do with AI and ML, but it's an interesting story to tell. HubSpot had this thing called website grader, one product. So you could go to HubSpot site and type your URL, it will run through your website and it will give it a grade. And it will say, hey, if you give me your email, I can send you a report on how to improve your, your grade. And then they get your email address, that is the lead generation mechanism. And then uh, they'll, of course, send you a lot of email and how to do social and media marketing, all free content. Normally very, very good content. And uh, four or five years ago, uh, HubSpot had five million people using this website grade. Out of five million, even if they get one percent or point one percent, they are talking about a whole bunch of qualified leads. And then when they send you the paper, they'll do a small trick and they'll progressively get your you know, profile. They'll say, what is your major marketing problem? They'll, they'll ask you for name and email, which everybody is going to give. Um, if we don't give Facebook, we'll give to them. <laughs> we don't, we don't give them anymore. So um, they'll say, what is your marketing problem? And to me, that is like awesome. But think about it. I got now five million marketing problems. Okay, <laughs> what are we going to do? And that's why the machine learning comes to help. One is I can cluster it. I can find out what is called a similarity distance between one problem and another problem. That's an algorithm in machine learning where you know Poisson similarity where you know you can you can, you can do lots of things. You can do topic extraction. So that is uh, something that may come up a little bit. There is this thing called, uh, there is al algorithms, there are a whole bunch of algorithms for entity extraction from text. So let us say I read a newspaper article, I read an online newspaper article, so I have the digital copy of it. What do you do after that? I said, oh, these three companies did this thing. Okay, companies where? I'm going to copy paste them, I'm going to type them into a notebook, I'm going to write, I mean, write, write it into a notebook, I'm going to type it into something. There is software that they just plug it in, and actually it's done by writers, it's called Open Calais. You copy paste your article, it will extract all the entities, mention of every company, name, conference, anything that you can consider as an entity, it will pull out and give it to you. Open Canada doesn't work that great, but now there are a lot of open software so tools that will give you. You can get these entities, you can get the relationships, I think, which is even more interesting. And now you start knowing about businesses a little bit more. So you're not passively consuming a newspaper article, it's all going into your head and then escaping there after a few days. But it's actually now being converted into some data that you can use. You can actually build a knowledge base and use it, right? Um, when did they come here? Yeah. So take all those five million things that HubSpot got. It can do topic extraction. Say, what are the major problems in market? And you will suddenly find out my my problem is lead generation. My problem is scaling. My problem is content creation. This company went public, I think, a year ago. Uh, one of the founders is a guy by name Damesha. Uh, they wrote a book on inbound marketing. They also run one of the best inbound marketing groups in LinkedIn um, and produce amazing content. The content is fantastic. If you want to be a star on LinkedIn, there's an article in HubSpot and how to do it. I mean, whether you become a star or not is questionable, <laughs> but you can at least read this article and figure out what are the steps that are, uh, that are there. You want to be a king on Twitter, you know, there is. So there is the, uh, there are, originally the text was being processed in a very uh, linguistic manner, in the sense that a lot of computer, computational linguistic algorithms are being used for creating a structure out of a sentence and passing the sentence and all that. So there is a very cheap, like a three-lane program that you can write in Python, that given a sentence, pull out subject, predicate, object, or basically all your uh, nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and all that stuff, uh, throw away the adjectives, and you'll get some clean text. Then you can, what you can do is, you can actually do all this stuff in with very, very little code. And, uh, or ask somebody to write it and the student can write this. And the library is already exist. But that field, the natural language processing, it is called the NLTK, natural language toolkit, has progressed several steps. In 2015, there was a paper on word to vec, taking words and converting it to vectors, and then you can do manipulation. And believe me that I, this is not a demo session, but if I show you a demo, you can say uh, man, is, man is to a king as woman is to, and it will come back and say queen. And then 
young computer doesn't understand what is king, what is queen, what is man, what is woman. They still don't understand. So we, we don't have to worry about it. It will take a long time. There is no semantics, you know, there is no understanding. It is just, you know, what they do? They just find the co-occurrence patterns of words. How frequently man and king occur in the same sentence and what would be the equivalent. So there, this is all vector arithmetic. A simple vector representation. And that is a really fascinating field and uh, and you can do lots of wonders. So from word to word, now they have got sentence to word. Uh, there are a lot of technologies, right? Once you have a natural language processing, then you need to do text. Think about it. I went and searched for articles on AI and marketing. I went to Google, went to Twitter, got a bunch of links, and now I have 100 articles to do. Okay. I can't read 100 articles. So I picked a few manually. But my next project is to take these 100 articles and give it to an article summarizer. There are article summarizers. There is open source code available. If you are interested, let me know. I will show you a couple of GitHub projects. It will read all, it will take all the articles and give you like one paragraph summary of each one of the articles. Just think about how much. And then it will also say this article is similar to this, which anyway Google says in the news and all that sort of stuff. But now I don't have to depend on Google for this. Article summarizers, if you give, I get a quick one like a well-written articles in theory, if you read the first paragraph, it tells you about the article. In practice, I haven't seen that happen. The first first paragraph has a lot of sensation, and the rest, the rest of it is sitting here and there kind of thing. So these articles that summarizers use very, very interesting algorithms. And uh, that itself is fascinating. Just by learning to see how article summarizer works, I'm learning a lot about how I learn, how I read, how I comprehend those kinds of things. So, going to a little story because it can get very tiring after some time. Um, so I was reading this book on speed reading and I somehow thought my way to solve the world's problem is if I can read 10 times faster, I can read a lot more and then I can tweet a lot more and kill most of the people around me. Uh, so I started uh, reading this uh, article and it got very fascinating thing. He said, but first thing you do is you measure what your reading speed is. The pointed to me to an article. I went to that article, I cheated a little bit, I just skipped every article word and read really, really fast. And then I put it by it came in and I said stop and then stop when I finished it. It did some computation, came back and said, Oh, you read the X number of words. And I was very happy and they said click for your score, actual score, click next. Click next, there's a list of questions and comprehension of what I read. <laughs> and I looked at these questions and said, Wow, really? Am I supposed to learn? I was supposed to answer all these questions with like five paragraphs of text I read before. And then it occurred to me, he said, okay, fine, you know, all right. So I went back and read the chapter again. And I was able to, my reading score still was not that bad, but comprehension score got better. But every time I went to that, it gave me the same article and same set of questions. So it is pretty useless. So I said, okay, we need to fix this. Uh, I work a lot with college students, so we thought, what is the next thing you can do? Can I extract questions from text? And I said, if it is, I said, this is kind of an interesting idea. How do people design questionnaire, uh, you know, comprehension test and all? They not be, people may not be typing manually, reading paragraphs and typing these questions manually. So I went around looking for it. There are a couple of very interesting question extracts. And you give it a, a whole document, it will generate a whole bunch of questions. And then you can pick which questions you want to choose. And then you can attach it to the document, and you can send it, and um, you know, very interesting. It's all because of machine learning. Uh, now I think a little bit of deep learning, natural language processing. It is called natural language understanding. Okay. 